If you think the worst thing the universe could do is throw an asteroid at Earth, you might want to think again. Space can be oh so wonderful, but it can also be oh so terrifying. There's so much we still don't know about what's out there and just how it all works. But even the little we do know, well, that's enough to show us that the universe does have countless ways to just end all life as we know it. In 2021, a team of scientists from Toho University in Japan published a paper titled The Future Lifespan of Earth's Oxygenated Atmosphere. In it, they predicted that the atmosphere that we all need to, you know, live will collapse in about a billion years due to the sun's aging process. At that point, all oxygen-dependent life on Earth will cease to exist, including us. Now, the good news is a billion years is a really long time away for you and me, but also it's not that much on a cosmic scale. And perhaps most importantly, the sun's increasing heat is not the only way the universe could completely destroy us. The truth is that there are many far more disturbing dangers out there, and they could easily kill us all tomorrow. Not in, you know, a billion years. Rogue black holes could turn you into spaghetti. To most people, black holes are scary in a pretty abstract way. We don't know that much about them, other than the fact that not even light can escape them. According to current estimates, there are about 100 million black holes in the Milky Way galaxy alone. However, you're probably rarely thinking about the danger they pose. If we're on planet Earth and these black holes are bound to the gravity of stars that light years away, we should be pretty safe, right? Well, unfortunately, no, that's not quite the case. Scientists have confirmed the existence of these things called rogue black holes. And these are basically black holes that don't have a companion star. They roam freely across the universe, which means that one day one of them could just wander into our solar system. If a rogue black hole with a mass greater than the moon got too close to Earth, we could all die in a truly horrible way. One option is that the black hole would cause something called spaghettification. This is a process where objects, including planets, are stretched and compressed into a long, thin, noodle-like shape. Eventually, it leads to everything being completely torn apart. And if the Earth is destroyed like this, well, then obviously we all die as well. But spaghettification isn't the only way that a rogue black hole could kill us. It could also wreak havoc on humanity, even if it never got as close to us as that its mere presence in the solar system could have a disastrous effect. For example, it could bump into another object and throw us out of the solar system or into the sun or something. In the best case scenario, we might have to deal with natural disasters such as earthquakes. What makes all of this even scarier is that rogue black holes are extremely difficult to spot. Scientists agree that there should be plenty of them out there in space, but we only know of one rogue black hole that's currently moving around in our galaxy. It's located in the Sagittarius constellation, which is, as a relief, 5,000 light years away, and it was discovered by a team at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, Maryland. The reason astronomers were able to find it is that it passed in front of a background star, causing a brightening and dimming effect known as gravitational microlensing. But this isn't always guaranteed to happen. Rogue black holes aren't tied to any objects, so we can't solely rely on changes in light to discover them. They're also dark, which makes them harder to spot. So, for all we know, there could be several rogue black holes floating around our galaxy that we have no idea about. And while scientists agree that the chances of a rogue black hole destroying Earth are extremely small, it's still pretty fucking terrifying, isn't it? Especially if you've seen that Stargate episode <laughs> where the black hole in the sky, ah! Gamma ray bursts could destroy the ozone layer. We often think about the sun as a pretty powerful force in the universe. It's one of the things that makes life on Earth possible after all. But on a cosmic scale, the sun is far from the biggest player. If you want to talk about really powerful things in the universe, let's talk about gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts, or GRBs, are these very short bursts of energy that happen when massive stars collapse into black holes or when neutron stars collide. Now, to really give you an idea of how powerful GRBs are, let's compare them to the sun, shall we? So, the sun's got a life expectancy of about 10 billion years, and in all that time, it will still produce less energy than one mere second-long gamma ray burst. That's how mind-blowingly powerful we're talking about here. Now, the good news is that GBRs are pretty rare, and even when they do hit Earth, we're protected from them by the ozone layer. The bad news is that all the GBRs we've detected and been hit with have been in galaxies oh so very far away from the Milky Way. The ozone layer can keep us safe, but only if the gamma ray bursts keep happening at a large enough distance. If a GBR ever happened in our galaxy, it would have 
catastrophic consequences for us. The burst would burn away our ozone layer, which would allow ultraviolet rays from the sun to flood the Earth. This radiation would cause all sorts of problems, including skin cancer and the death of photosynthetic plankton, putting our oxygen in danger. Humanity would be changed forever if not completely wiped out. I'll take a little bit of skin cancer then. <laughs> Luckily, the chances of this happening to us are not very high. According to astronomer Genevieve Schroeder, GBRs are quite rare, and the stars near Earth aren't very likely to create gamma ray bursts at all. Therefore, we can rest easy, probably. But there's always the stuff the scientists don't know, and a recent GRB observation proved that we might still have much more to learn about this powerful phenomenon. On July the 2nd of this very year, 2025, the longest ever GRB was recorded. Normally, a gamma ray burst lasts a maximum of a few minutes. This one went on for a whole day. What's more, this GRB also went off repeatedly, which left the scientific community rather baffled. Astrophysicist Antonio Martin Carrillo from University College Dublin pointed out that usually the bursts only happen once because the source of them doesn't survive the massive explosion. This time around, though, something different happened, and it's not clear what caused this. So, could a gamma ray burst kill us all? Yeah. Is it likely to happen? No. But we can never be 100% sure. Vacuum decay could destroy the whole universe. In quantum physics, there's a terrifying theory about the vacuum we live in that, if proven true, could kill us all. Some scientists believe that we could be living in something called a false vacuum, with the real, true vacuum being out there and potentially threatening our existence. Broadly speaking, a vacuum is a space of the lowest global amount of energy possible. When the universe started, there was a lot of energy everywhere which wasn't very stable. This was a false vacuum which was eventually replaced by what we've been thinking of as a true vacuum, aka what we live in now. Except there's this slight chance that the vacuum that we're in still isn't the lowest global amount of energy possible. Instead, it could just be the lowest amount locally. A more stable, true vacuum could still exist, which would mean that we now live in a false vacuum after all. If this is true, then we might be in quite a bit of danger. You see, a false vacuum isn't perfectly stable. And if even a little bit of our universe was pushed into true vacuum, our own vacuum would start decaying. This event would create a bubble of the true vacuum in our universe, which would quickly spread everywhere. As a result, everything, including the laws of physics, would change. Nothing would survive this, and a brand new universe would be born in our place. At this stage, this vacuum decay theory, it's just that, it's just a theory. It could be true, but might also not be. And even if it is true, we are likely not in any immediate danger. Scientists estimate that a universe in a false vacuum would still last much, much longer than our universe has been around for. So, while vacuum decay could technically kill us, the probability of this happening in our lifetime just isn't very high at all. Galactic cannibalism could eat you whole. One of the most sinister ways the universe could kill us is through something called galactic cannibalism. The name itself is quite chilling, but it gets worse. This isn't some strange thing that might happen. Unless something else takes us out first, our galaxy will be eaten at some point. We know this for a fact. The way galaxies grow is relatively simple. They consume smaller galaxies to expand. The gravity of the bigger galaxy draws in the smaller one and it then absorbs it. The Milky Way has done this in the past too, and scientists are sure that this galactic cannibalism is what awaits us in the future. If you know anything about other galaxies, you've probably heard of the Andromeda Galaxy. It's one of our neighbors, and unfortunately for us, it's more than twice as big as the Milky Way. Astrophysicist Geraint Lewis also confirmed that scientists have discovered that the galaxy has been known to eat smaller objects. All of this means that sooner or later, we're going to get cannibalized by Andromeda. This is bad news for humanity, but you don't have to worry, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Scientists currently believe that we're going to be eaten in about 3 billion years or more. So while galactic cannibalism will likely be the end of us, it won't be you dying this way or possibly even humanity it's 3 billion years away will probably all be long gone. Hypervelocity stars could wipe humanity out. In the Milky Way, most stars move at a speed of about a couple hundred thousand miles per hour. However, there are some exceptions to this, including the so-called hypervelocity stars. These stars, as the name suggests, are much faster than irregular stars. They can move at a speed of over a thousand kilometers per second. 
scientists first discovered these HV stars in 2005. They're pretty rare, likely due to how they've come about. Astronomer Warren Brown described this process as paradoxical. For a hypervelocity star to be made, two stars orbiting each other have to get close to the supermassive black hole that's at the center of the Milky Way. What happens next? It's pretty unusual. When we think about black holes, we mostly imagine them consuming everything that gets too close. But when two stars orbiting each other get close, only one of them gets sucked in. The other one is then actually shot into space by the powerful gravity of the black hole, which accounts for its impressive speed. If a star like this hit us, it could do some serious damage to Earth. It could even kill us. Fortunately, we've got a pretty long time to prepare for this. If our telescopes picked up on an HV star that's about one light year away, we'd still know of its arrival a couple of centuries in advance. So while hypervelocity stars may seem like these terrifying and superfast balls of energy, they're not likely to wipe out humanity anytime soon. Magnetars could dissolve all matter. Hypervelocity stars aren't the only stars that could kill you. There are also magnetars, which are neutron stars with extremely powerful magnetic fields. The sheer power of these magnetic fields is difficult for us to even imagine. For example, the Earth's magnetic field is less than one gauss. That's not a lot. Comparatively, an MRI machine has a much higher magnetic field at about 10,000 gauss. The strongest ever magnetic field created in the lab was around 12 million. It was produced by a team at the University of Tokyo, and it lasted for just 40 microseconds. But all of this is absolutely nothing compared to the magnetic fields of magnetars, which are uh, about a trillion gauss. In practice, this means that if a magnetar ever got too close to Earth, it could easily destroy us. All matter would get affected, and pretty much everything would just dissolve. As of right now, there are no magnetars anywhere near us, so the chances of humanity being killed by one of them are quite low. However, we can still be affected by magnetars that are relatively far away from us, and indeed it's actually happened before. In 1979, a couple of Soviet spaceships were affected by the radiation emitted by a magnetar, and in 2004, our ionosphere was hit and damaged by a magnetar blast that was 50,000 light years away. So, the issue with magnetars isn't just their magnetic fields, it's the radiation too, which can include the previously discussed gamma ray bursts, and well, we know how bad those can be. Magnetars are not something we should be actively terrified of every single day, but they definitely have the power to kill us if the stars align in a really bad way. Reversal of Earth's magnetic field could turn everything upside down. All right, let's stick with magnetic fields for a second longer. The Earth's magnetic field, while not particularly strong compared to magnetars, is stable and an important part of what protects life on our planet. It shields us from particle storms and cosmic rays emitted by the sun, as well as objects in deep space. However, Earth's magnetic field also has a certain habit, reversing in polarity. During this reversal, the magnetic field gets weaker and weaker until the North and South Pole switch places. On average, this process happens once every 300,000 years, except as of right now, it's been 780,000 years since the last time it happened. What's this mean? Well, scientists agree that another reversal is imminent. Our magnetic field has been decreasing, so all signs point to this happening sooner rather than later. And while this may be a regular occurrence on Earth, it could cause some serious issues for humanity as well as all other life on Earth. The weaker the magnetic field gets, the less protection from dangerous cosmic phenomena we have. Particle storms and cosmic rays could seriously damage our ozone layer, which could lead to horizon issues like skin cancer. Some animals could also be seriously affected. Birds, sea turtles, and fish often rely on magnetic field for navigation, and the reversal could confuse them and destroy their sense of direction. On top of all of this, our technology may be affected too. The reversal likely wouldn't cause a mass extinction or anything, but it could certainly kill some people. And this is supported by the fact that there's no clear fossil evidence that points to extinction. Humans and their ancestors have gone through these reversals before, and none of them appear to have gone extinct. But the effects were still likely there, and it's possible that not everyone made it. So while the reversal of Earth's magnetic field wouldn't kill everyone, it could kill some people, including you. Though, not really. The process actually takes thousands of years, so it's much more likely to affect your very, very distant descendants. So, is the universe out to get us? Well, you see, the universe is a vast, mysterious place. It gave us life, but it could also take that away. There's so much we still don't know about what exactly goes on outside of our little corner of the universe, but even the little we do know 
can seem dangerous and terrifying. It's possible that the universe might decide to take us out in one of the many disturbing ways we've talked about. We can fight some of it, but some forces of nature may just be too strong for us to beat. The good news is that most of the ways the universe could destroy us take their time. So even if deep space has it out for us, those of us who are alive here and now are safe. Probably. Thank you for watching.